Hey, so today I'm gonna give you the six main reasons why your braids aren't protecting your hair. Happy summer solstice, it's officially summertime. And what that means, braids are usually the go-to for most black women. And in my last video, I talked about how braids don't necessarily mean protective styling and what a protective style actually is and does for your natural hair. So in this video, I want to bring awareness to the things that you shouldn't see or feel after wearing braids, but make sure you watch to the end because I was recently enlightened by a TikTok follower and I want to share my point of view on one of the things that I mentioned as a reason why your braids aren't protecting your hair, okay? So the first reason is pain. Traction alopecia is caused from wearing braid styles that are so tight that over time, the follicle is basically snatched from the root and you're doing this repeatedly. So I personally have felt pain from a tight hairstyle and I took it down because I knew that if I hadn't, I'd be risking damage to my edges. No to slight discomfort is normal, but pain so bad that you can't even sleep is not normal. So we gotta quit normalizing pain with braiding, all right? The second thing is that your hair is getting thinner each time you take your hair down. Braids are excellent in helping Afro textured hair grow, and it can also help you maximize your genetic hair density. But when you're repeatedly wearing tight braids, it's not only your edges that are at risk of being snatched, it's your whole head thinning out. And that's also a sign of traction alopecia when it's associated with the styles that you're wearing, okay? How do you know if it's the braids thinning your hair out? Two things, honesty and vision, which I've talked about this before, okay? This leads me to the next sign, number three, excessive hair shedding. Now your hair sheds about 100 strands a day. So after two weeks of wearing braids, that's what, 1,400 strands of hair? When you take the braids out and you comb that shed hair out, it's gonna seem excessive. But there are times when it's more excessive than the normal amount, all right? And the way that you can tell that is by looking at your hair. Vision, if it looks a lot thinner than before you got your hair braided and you're honest about that, right? You're honest that you felt some discomfort they were too tight and it's excessive, okay? Then you have to stop wearing the hairstyle or go into the braider that you chose or possibly both, all right? The fourth reason is excessive dirt and oil buildup at the base of the braid, especially when you use extensions, all right? Knotless or the old school wraparound method, doesn't matter. Once that dirt builds up to the degree where you can see it, it's past due to be shampooed. And I don't care how good the braids look. I know some of y'all spend a lot of money on these braids, so you wanna wear them till the wheels fall off. But just because they still look good, or you're still getting compliments, failing to realize that your hair and scalp are dirty and need to be cleaned, are going to basically cause you to lose an excessive amount of hair unnecessarily. It's gonna cause it to shed where all that hair built up. So when you take it out, you're just taking hair out with it. But there is a proper way to remove them, right? But it's not about your hair not doing anything or just leaving it alone. Like I hear so many women say, it requires consistent care and hygiene, all right? The fifth reason would be your, your braids are too heavy. All right, so just like you have to be mindful about tightness, you should be mindful about heaviness too. The weight of your average Kanekalon braiding hair is not like your real natural hair. It's a very dense fiber. And when you add that on top of yours, then of course you're putting weight on it. So when you're using five or more packs of 40 inch hair, it's gonna be super heavy. And it's actually gonna get heavier the longer you keep the braids in as your new growth begins to grow out. The sixth reason is your scalp's inflamed. Kanekalon braiding hair is notorious for causing bad reactions, even on clients that I've spoken to and used on in the past, 
okay? Yes, there's ways to remove those toxic components that cause those reactions like severe itching, swelling, redness, pain, bumps, okay? But I recommend just having your real hair braided if you want to have the best outcome from wearing the protective style. So I did a TikTok video about knowing what healthy hairstyles feel like, right? As a way to prevent yourself from getting traction alopecia. And a sister commented that she never felt pain and she still ended up with traction alopecia. And it really got me to thinking about pain tolerance versus the normalization of pain, which is what I talked about in number one. I automatically associate tightness with pain, but her comment made me realize that not everyone feels pain. But that doesn't mean that the braids are too tight. Again, vision and honesty. This is where that comes in. Because some of y'all want to style so bad that you're willing to take the risk and damage your real hair just to have it. So preventing hair loss really begins with holding yourself accountable for the styles that you choose and the braiders that you choose to do them for you. No temporary hairstyle is worth losing your hair for a lifetime. Awareness is key, okay? Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.